yesterday by the learned judge Justice Murima against one George Kinoti. It's not clear that warrant of arrest, how it is, because one, there are clear procedures for one to be admitted, a committal warrant committing you to a specific prison for a specific duration that must be received by the prison department. The prison department then decides to allocate you water, a toilet, food, and accommodation. In the Kinoti matter, there has never been a committal warrant. So there's no way Kinoti could go to committee and claim that allow me inside without a committal warrant. So procedurally, that is the procedure for one to be admitted in any prison in this country. Either accidentally or by design, the court failed or Jimmy Wanjiki failed to extract that order. Number two, this is a civil contempt, is not a criminal uh, sentence. It's a civil matter. <clears throat> so there was need for that committal to be done. Number two, the judge in that warrant is saying that the IG to arrest Kinoti, bring him to court to explain At the time of sentencing, Kinoti was supposed to have been heard, to have explained, and the explanation failed to convince the judge when he is sentenced. Now, if the Inspector General is being told to arrest Kinoti, to bring him to court, to explain, is that a summon or is it a warrant of a committal to prison? So there is a lacuna there. Definitely, George Kinoti must move to court. He must move to court. And his lawyers will be preparing to go to court. One, to challenge that he was never heard. You cannot be sentenced when you are called to court to be heard. You are heard first. You are found to have committed a contempt. Then you are given time to mitigate. Then after mitigation, you are sentenced. You know, it was never given that opportunity. And therefore, I'm sure the lawyers are preparing for documents, especially after the outcome of the warrant that is in between a warrant of arrest and summons to appear to explain himself. So I'm definite that George Kinoti will be heading to that place. Condemnors are normally given time to purge their conduct. Has Murima given Kinoti time to purge the conduct? Because what we have been seeing is a, a thread of events that are mysterious and that appears to be driven by other forces. Why has in not been given time to purge the conduct? Well, the learned judge has spoken and he has given directions. He has reasons as to why he has arrived there. But factually, George Kinoti was given time, was never given time to purge the content. He was never given time to mitigate. He was never given time to explain the circumstances. He was never given time to be present at the time of contempt. He was never given even a chance that once he has been found contemptuous, the option of a fine of Kenya shillings 200,000 is applicable. He not was sentenced to, to imprisonment with that option. So that's why we are saying that the lawyers might be moving to court to challenge now pursuant to the orders that came out yesterday. Given that Kinoti does not retain firearms, and the firearms uh, taken away from him were handed over to the board, 
why has the, the board been uh, pursued instead of pursuing an individual? You know, this story is quite very interesting because he's saying he does not control the, file, the firearms uh, uh, licensing board. Most probably his lawyers will advise him to write directly to the firearms licensing board to get the firearms. Then he presents them to court because once he has been summoned to court, it is now that he's going to give the facts why the orders cannot be implemented. So we expect George Kinoti and his lawyers, the Attorney General Olivi opts to hire a private lawyer to do that. Then that is the argument that is likely to be there. Well, I, I've said there is no committal warrant that will take Kinoti to committee. He cannot go there without a committal warrant. Only people with committal warrants becomes fugitives. So it is wrong legally to call Kinoti a fugitive, yet there are no procedures that are known under the Prisons Act and under the CPC and the procedures that are supposed to take Kinoti to prison. So he's not a fugitive. For now, he's not a fugitive because the procedures have not been followed. You filed an application seeking to compel Kinoti to arrest Jimmy over a cache of firearms which is retaining far more theory than the one contained by a central police station or any other police station. Has the court given directions to Kinoti to arrest? We were given seven days after filing. The court agreed with us and said we serve Kinoti within seven days. They respond within seven days. The seven days are ending tomorrow. We expect George Kinoti, the director of criminal investigation, to file an affidavit in response to our application, where we were seeking that he, the court orders him to arrest that person because he is in possession of military hardware that is more lethal than the armory at Central Police Station. So we expect after Kinoti responds, then the court will weigh, is our client having reason and the court compelling Kinoti to do what he's supposed to do. So do you think the warrant of arrest that was issued by the registrar of the ICOM is a move uh, orchestrated by Jimmy to defeat the orders that Kinoti arrest him? Well, we are representing the petitioner who wants Kinoti to arrest Wanjigi. Wanjigi equally has moved to court seeking for summons and warrants of arrest. So uh, to us as the advocates for the petitioner, not the adv advocates for Kinoti, this is an attempt to derail our matter so that the focus is on arresting Kinoti instead of Kinoti arresting somebody who is a national security risk. Yes, sir, Joe? It is notable in the, in the ruling which can reach the DC Court, the judge, in his own words, saying that some people threatened him with the dagger in the ring in favor of the state. And so that uh, judge is influenced by that decision to want to set the DC High as an example of the state of government. In the matter of uh, Justice Kantai, our client, Gabriela, the sister to Cohen, has filed an application for Justice Murina, Murima to recuse himself. Among the reasons we have raised in that application is that the judge seems to be acting outside what he's supposed to have decided. One, he, in his judgment, when he is convicting Kinoti, he says he had been approached not in a matter, an election petition. Kinoti was not a contestant. Then two, he had been told to make a certain judgment or certain ruling 
to uh, he, which he refused. The third thing is now he convicts Kinod. So we are saying in that application that <coughs> the judge is not is not fair. The judge looks to be biased. And if he has a fixed position towards George Kinoti, then Cabrera, the sister to Cohen, will not get fair judgment. So we strongly believe that uh, probably, who knows, George Kinoti might instruct his advocates to move to JSC for the removal of the judge from being a judge of the High Court of Kenya. I don't know. I don't advise the, uh, I don't advise Kinoti, but that might be in the office. The facts presented to the judge and the actions now calling Kinoti to come and explain after sentence, people are never, convicts are never called to explain after they have been sentenced. You get sentenced after your explanations have not been, have been rejected. So, Kinoti has been summoned, the IG to arrest him, to bring to court, to explain, which means he never was given a chance to explain himself. Now that he will be coming to explain himself, the question is, are we, is the judge saying that he has vacated the sentence to commit? That is the implication. Because he's coming to explain and to mitigate what about the sentence that is already there and he's supposed to, con to be convicted. All the prisoners in committee, all of them, have not been arrested, have not been called back to explain to the court why. Because they have already been convicted and they have been sentenced. Why will Ikinoti be called back as somebody who has been sentenced to explain himself? So, to us, and that's what you are reading, that it is an ambiguous order, it is an ambiguous uh, arrest uh, warrant, because it is not possible, legally possible, a convict to come from committee, if Kinoti was in committee, could he come to explain? Explanations are precedent to sentencing. But now we are getting sentencing before explanation. And that's why we believe that George Kinoti was never given a fair hearing, he was never heard, and it is now the court is saying, come and we hear you. And the judge is the judge is, has decided, we are only saying we don't agree with the judge's position, but that is a judgment from the High Court. It is bound to be respected. We have seen before the Deputy President, you think because of this, there is some political supporters to push for this matter? Well, I wouldn't want to talk about the politics of the day. This is the, politic, the politician's time. Elections are here. They have their entitlement. Uh, I wouldn't want to talk about Idenis Itumbi, nor the politics of the day. I restrict myself that the position of the law constitutionally and statutorily, Kinot was never had, and the decisions on him were not based on any point of law. Given the evidence that has been brought forth, uh, the court, to your motto, can inform on its own motion the file of Kinoti on the issue of condemned and correct its position. Now that the court is seized with information that Kinoti was never heard, it has, he has been furnished with fresh evidence which would vindicate Kinoti. Why is in the judge using that position as it is a long, long term practice? To a motto, he can recall the file and correct its position. We expected the judge to issue summons not warrants to arrest Kinoti to be brought to explain. Summons come first before warrants are issued. There is no evidence or affidavit that Kinoti was served with summons to appear in court in person. He never signed that he will appear in court in person. Failure to that angle, that is what I think uh, uh, Wanjigi and his team are trying to cure by saying arrest him now, let him come and explain, which is totally foreign to law.